Part of the last back-to-back -back champs, 06, 07, Billy Donovan's teams were basically intact. He brought back pretty much the exact same roster back-to-back -back seasons, this one with all the turnover. Legs is here to break it down, and again, we so appreciate Uncle Seth getting up way early for us out there in the desert. All right, what is the number one reason, Seth Greenberg, that UConn is number one again? It's a collective responsibility, offensively and defensively. It's Danny Hurley as the coach being the most dominant coach of college basketball today. But it's the collective responsibility. Think about this. They played against the Purdue team. Let's just take Purdue. They take out away what you do best. All right? Purdue's a team that averaged assist on 65% of their field goals. See, they had more turnovers than assists last night. What they did was they took off the head of the snake. What they said, you know what? Zach Eady. All right, he scored early and he scored a bunch of points. But let me tell you something. They traded taking him the three-point line away and making him score over Donovan Klingon. And those baskets that Edie scored early in the game, Greeny, he scored over him. They got him off the block. He made some tough shots. But as the game wore on, their ability, the collective responsibility, uh, the ability for different guys to step up at different times. You looked at Samson Johnson and those two, two lobs, middle third of the floor. That's where Connecticut plays offensively. Middle third of the floor, he... Samson Johnson comes in, it's like a knuckleball pitcher. Cleans in, they play one way. Johnson comes in, they play a little bit differently. Just a dominant performance, not just this year, just not just last night. The last 12 games they've played in the NCAA tournament, all right, the walk-ons were in at the end of the game. <laughs> the walk-ons were in at the end of the game. They've dominated college basketball in the NCAA tournament for two consecutive years with two different rosters. They lost three guys to the NBA, five of their top eight scorers, and they dominated the NCAA tournament this past year. So what does that tell us? I mean, Legs, I'll go back to the game in a minute, but Seth, let's, you're going where I really wanted to get anyway. How do we put into perspective what Dan Hurley and UConn have accomplished now in this back-to-back -back championship run? How do you put it in perspective? It's domination. It's domination. It comes from the way they do and why they do what they do. It comes from roster management, the model that Dan Hurley has used to become this dominant basketball program. You know, it, it, it's not one guy. I mean, no one scored more than 22 points in the NCAA tournament. All right? It's a collective responsibility. Everyone embraces what they do well. Everyone buys into the good of the group. And his coaching is brilliant. They take Terrence Shannon out at Illinois. They basically take Sears out. Every time they were pushed, and they only pushed a couple times, they responded. But And Legs, you can understand that because you've been around the Hurley family. It's not the game. It's the preparation. Like, I go to practice, you know, every two or three weeks. way they play in those games is no different. The accountability is no different than what they do in practice. The accountability, they're hold, held accountable from the second they walk in to watch film, to the individual workouts, to the stance work, to the concept work, the ODOs, everything you do, there's an accountability. He's different. He's not afraid to coach his team. And what they do, I say, Danny Hurley, they play defense like they're from Jersey City. They play mm -hmm. offense like they're playing in FIBA. They play <laughs> differently than everyone else and everyone. Everyone buys in. He holds everyone accountable. Uh, it's, it's fascinating watching what they do. But it's no different than what his dad did when he was the head coach at St. Anthony's High School. He's taken that model and applied it to college basketball and they're the most dominant program in college basketball over the last two years. Uh, right this minute, they're the first family of the basketball world, right? Dad, yeah, the legendary right. coach. Bobby, obviously, the point guard at Arizona State now. And here's Dan, back-to-back -back national championships. What do you see when you watch this team? Well, a couple things stood out to me last night. And I'm going to start first with what Seth was talking about in terms of game plan against Purdue. Look, I've, I've been around basketball a long time. I've seen a lot of game plans drawn up that were designed to stay home with shooters, take away the three-point line, no help responsibility. You hear these things all the time, and then you know what happens typically when a team starts scoring in the paint? There's an overreaction to that defensively because your instincts as a player are to help when you're being scored on in the paint, and then that's going to lead to open threes. I've seen it so many times in my career. They didn't do it last night. They stuck to what they knew was going to work against Purdue, and it didn't matter what they were giving up early in the game. They didn't panic. They didn't overreact. They didn't get undisciplined. 
They stayed with what they knew ultimately would expose Purdue's weaknesses because they don't have enough guys that can do multiple things offensively. They have one way to beat you. And if you were going to take that aspect of their game away, there was no way they were going to generate enough offense to do it. So that's the first thing that stood out to me. Incredible execution and discipline and a great game plan. And then offensively, I just thought UConn's guards and their wings, the size difference and the versatility and what they could do to put the ball on the floor and make plays for other people, Purdue really didn't have that with their wing players. And as a result, some of those guys were completely taken out of the game. I have his Seth. wife's number, Seth, <laughs> but I do have you here. And I, I do know, for whatever it's worth, I'm not accusing anyone. Of, I'm accusing is too strong a word. I mean, Jim Harbaugh said almost exactly the same thing after Michigan won the national championship four months ago, and he's now the coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. So people will say Kentucky could back up a Brinks truck to Dan Hurley. Now, you know him well. You know the landscape of college basketball better than anyone. How do you see this thing? Look, Kentucky will back up a Brinks truck. And I, I think it's a decision that is going to have to make. It has nothing to do with Connecticut and Kentucky. It has to do with the, basically the culture of college athletics today. I mean, the, the, in, in the near future, we might only have two major conferences or four major conferences. Where will the Big East fit in that model? Will the Big East, will, will UConn end up in the Big East or maybe will they end up in the ACC or the Big 12? I think that's kind of the bigger question because Danny Hurley is the best coach in college basketball. So like, but he's a Jersey guy and he's a fit right there. And that fits his geographic footprint. What I mean by that is that Northeastern corridor, he is all Jersey City. Can his act work somewhere else? No doubt about it. But he's comfortable in that environment. Uh, so, like, to me, I think the big question for Danny Hurley is he's got to look at UConn and say, all right, where's the future of UConn athletics? All right, what conference are we going to play in? Because when, when the model of college athletics changes, UConn could be on the outside looking in because potentially they're not going to be part of that party. So I think that's the bigger question. If he goes to Kentucky, and let's just use Kentucky as an example, he's in the SEC. The SEC is the focal point of college athletics because of the football model, all right? It, it, that's just the way it is. That's mm -hmm. where the revenue is going to be generated. Uh, and Kentucky will have those resources. Will Connecticut, they'll have the resources, but will they be in the same league as those four conferences or the three conferences that, that will exist? I think that's the question Danny has to answer. I don't want to answer for him. I just know one thing. He's a Jersey guy. UConn's going to come up with the money and right now, in this moment in time, the bluest of bloods, the bluest of bloods is Connecticut and Connecticut's facilities, their practice facility and the resources around their program are at the same level as Kentucky. That's fair. I'm just very quickly for those who, I mean, John Calipari from Pittsburgh and Rick Pitino was from Long Island and they both did real well in Lexington, Kentucky. So I don't know that a guy from Jersey City could or couldn't do it. That's a whole separate thing. Seth, let me ask you quickly. Let's say it isn't Dan Hurley. Who should be number one on Kentucky's list? Who should Kentucky want to replace Coach Calipari, assuming it isn't Coach Hurley? If it's not Coach Hurley and it's not Billy Donovan, mm -hmm. the best fit for Kentucky, in my opinion, is Bruce Pearl. Because he, he brings all the energy, the passion, the ownership. He's a brilliant coach. He, he had success at Tennessee. He's had incredible ses, success at Auburn. Uh, to me, Br Bruce Pearl has, has the energy that you need to deal with the Big Blue Nation, and he is a, not a good coach. He is a great coach. He's won at hard places. He missed no steps in his coaching career. be very interesting to see how that goes. All right.